proceed with the case four year old karan uh, residing from uh, thambaram uh, who is brought up by his mother whose reliability is good so main chief complaints is complaints of loose watery stools for the past 3 days and vomiting for the past 2 days this is the chief complaints and history of presenting illness child was apparently normal 3 days back and started having loose stools for the past 3 days which was watering consistency four to five episodes per day yellow in color large volume foul smelling and not associated with blood and mucus there was no aggravating factors and relieving factors so the description of the stools is mainly to differentiate from the small bowel diarrhea and large bowel diarrhea so the the things which i have described here watery consistency uh, large volume stools yellow color all points towards small bowel diarrhea uh, the thing is most important thing is if the stools are associated with blood and mucus then the diagnosis goes in favor of dysentery and if the mother is saying is rice watery stools then the diagnosis goes in favor of cholera so if it is a large bowel diarrhea it will be a small volume stools and uh, it will be associated with blood and mucus and uh, it, it will be a small frequent stools uh, the volume will be small amount so this is how differentiate between the small bowel diarrhea and large bowel diarrhea and small bowel diarrhea usually the color of the stools is yellow color whereas a large bowel diarrhea the color of the stools is usually dark color and uh, it is small in amount and frequent stools so this is how you differentiate between the small bowel diarrhea and large bowel diarrhea so history of the vomiting for the past two days two to three episodes per day vomitus contains food particles not blood stain non projectile and non bilious so usually the small bowel diarrhea it, it will have a coexisting symptoms of vomiting fever and other symptoms fever it's it's usually low grade in a, a small bowel diarrhea whereas if it is a large bowel diarrhea and pointing towards bacterial etiology the child may have high grade fever toxic flu so if it is a viral associated diarrhea a small bowel diarrhea usually they will have a fever with vomiting fever may be present or may not be present they will have loose stools and vomiting so next thing is uh, negative history coming towards negative history no history of fever no history of cold and cough no history of difficulty in breathing and fast breathing so sometimes uh, diarrhea can be associated with some other systemic uh, infections like pneumonia urinary tract infection otitis media so that is called as parenteral diarrhea so you should ask history to rule out those conditions so here we are asking for fever can be as such can come in diarrhea so that is there cough cold difficulty in breathing all this point towards pneumonia whereas fast breathing uh, can be a, can be a part of uh, the infection uh, can be a part of the dehydration also if there is a severe dehydration child may have acidotic breathing so child may have tachypnea so difficulty in breathing can be a part of pneumonia fast breathing can be a complication of dehydration also next thing is no history of abdominal pain abdominal pain Uh, usually in a large bowel diarrhea or colitis or dysentery child may complain of abdominal pain so it is also uh, the diarrhea can be a part of uh, inflammatory disorders or uh, some other diseases like pancreatitis irritable bowel syndrome inflammatory bowel disorders so in those uh, scenarios the child may usually have abdominal pain no history of poor oral intake so again if the child is having severe dehydration child may be lethargy drowsy and the oral intake may be poor so to assess the dehydration we are asking that question and no history of dysuria to rule out the urinary tract infections we have to ask that and uh, the forthcoming histories are very important so based on this we are going to say your diagnosis we have to, we are going to assess the dehydration so no history of excessive thirst no history of sunken eyes no history of decreased urinary output no history of drowsiness or lethargy so all these are features of dehydration Uh, excessive thirst when you offer the uh, when you give child the water the child if the child drinks eagerly then it point towards some dehydration the same child if the child is drowsy and lethargy unable to drink water then it points towards uh, severe dehydration if the child is drinking normally then it then it, it says the child is not having any dehydration similarly say no history of sunken eyes and no history of decreased urine output all this uh, features point towards a dehydration so next thing is you have to assess the complications of dehydration so no history of altered sensorium no history of convulsions and no history of abdominal distension so main complication of dehydration is the electrolyte imbalance so convulsions altered sensorium can happen because of hyponatremia or hypernatremia so you have to uh, ask histories uh, regarding the complications of dehydration next thing is abdominal distension 
abdominal distension uh, can happen because of hypokalemia that is called as paralytic ileus so that is also very important so your negative histories should rule out the other systemic infections should assess the dehydration and also you should uh, check out the complications of dehydration this is how you divide your negative histories so next thing is you also diarrhea can be a part of the immunodeficiency also like pediatric hiv diseases can uh present like chronic diarrhea so you have to rule out that also so you have to ask a history of recurrent respiratory tract infections so history of joint pain and uh, swelling uh, if the diarrhea is a part of inflammatory bowel disorders then a child may have along with the diarrhea child may have joint pain and like arthralgia and arthritis can be present so you have to ask that history and certain drugs can induce diarrhea so you have to ask the drug intake no history of any drug intake amoxicillin main mostly oral amoxicillin can cause diarrhea the other drugs are ampicillin anti neoplastic drugs can cause diarrhea and also certain drugs can induce emesis so furosemides uh, can cause vomiting so you have to ask the drug intake history no history of yellow discoloration of the eyes mainly we are asking jaundice to rule out any other liver disorders because diarrhea can be a part of the malabsorption syndromes and also any liver disorders can cause diarrhea so this is how you present your history and coming to past history no history of previous similar episodes and no history of previous hospitalization suppose if the child is having recurrent diarrhea uh, child may uh, child may have any other uh, disorders and diarrhea can be a part of that disorders like cystic fibrosis celiac disease and also no history of previous similar episodes suppose if the child is having chronic diarrhea child would have had previous episodes so these two histories are very important contact history no history of contact with tuberculosis uh, even abdominal tuberculosis can have episodes of uh, diarrhea and constipation alternating uh, episodes of diarrhea and constipation so that is also very important birth history as such it is not significant in a diarrhea case so you can write it as normal birth history developmental history immunization history you can write it as normal and nutrition history before the onset of the illness what was the calorie intake protein intake that you should calculate and uh, certain things are important when you are taking the nutrition history you should ask whether the diarrhea followed taking cow's milk so it points towards cow milk protein allergy if if the diarrhea was followed uh, uh, the child if the child had diarrhea following the intake of milk then that is point towards lactose intolerance mostly lactose the age factor is very important in this child four year child uh, this is un, uh, unlikely lactose intolerance so lactose intolerance usually present at very young age so in this child it is not uh, relevant but you should know all those things and also if the diarrhea was uh, followed uh, following the intake of wheat then it points towards celiac disease so you should ask any particular food substance aggravated this caused this diarrhea or not so that part should be included in the nutrition history so socio economic history is important diarrhea because uh, diarrhea it's mainly f- uh, food and water bond diseases so uh, poor hygienic practices can be the risk factor for the di- for this diarrhea so you should socio economic history it should be uh, little bit uh, detailed you should take so nuclear family four members father is a carpenter which comes under skilled worker he is a literate mother is a housewife per capita income you should calculate uh, monthly income divided by the total number of family members so rupee 6250 lives in a pakka house with two rooms and separate kitchen for cooking each room has one window and one one door uh, drinks can water without boiling latrine facilities present but disposes garbage in front of the home so according to the modified kuppasami uh, scale the family falls under the low social economic status you should also mention the score family history main thing is uh, if if the diarrhea is because of food poisoning then many other family members will have the same complaints so you can ask history of any similar complaints in other family members if the diarrhea is a part of any other disorders like celiac disease cystic fibrosis any other liver uh, problems then you should ask any such disorders in the other family members so that is the significance of family history in a diarrhea case uh, if suppose if if you pay, uh, if the child is having chronic diarrhea and some other family members is also having similar uh, illness then better to draw a pedigree chart so summarizing the history four year old male child presenting with loose stools and vomiting which was acute and onset with no history suggest to of dehydration with poor hygiene and lower socio economic status and no significant history in the past i would like to give my probable diagnosis as acute watery diarrhea with no dehydration so coming to the general examination 
So how is the child's general activity, whether the child is alert, active, conscious, or it, this, this itself can assess the dehydration. Suppose if the child is drowsy and lethargic, it points towards uh, severe uh, dehydration. If the child is irritable and restless, it points towards some dehydration. So here the child is alert and active. Vitals is very important. Blood pressure, 90 bar 60 mm Hg. So main thing is you should look for the hypotension. If the child is having severe dehydration, uh, blood pressure may be low. So the, this formula is for systolic blood pressure, 2 into age in years plus 70. If the cutoff is below that, if the BP systolic blood pressure is below that, then the child is having hypotension. So you should know this formula. And the respiratory rate, 25 per minute. So if the child is having severe dehydration, child might have an acidotic breathing, can have tachypnea. So that is the importance of respiratory rate. Temperature to check whether the child is having fever or not. Pulse rate, 90 per minute. So the vitals, uh, mainly, it points towards the dehydration. Anthropometry, anthropometry is important diarrhea case because uh, malnutrition and diarrhea, uh, both are uh, like, uh, both have a uh, cycle. Like the child is having malnutrition, they are prone for diarrhea. Diarrhea itself can cause malnutrition. So malnutrition child, mostly they will have recurrent diarrhea. So anthropometry is very important to rule out the malnutrition in a child. So this child weight is 12 kg against the expected of 16 kg. Height is uh, 95 centimeter against the expected of 101 centimeter. Head circumference is 50 centimeter. Mid upper arm circumference is 13 centimeter. So head to toe examination, no pallor, ictus, edema, clubbing and cyanosis. So each point is important. Pallor to rule out underlying nutritional deficiency like iron deficiency. Ictus to look for any liver disorders, edema, uh, any child with severe acute malnutrition or protein energy malnutrition will have edema. Clubbing uh, can be a part of the celiac disease, cystic fibrosis or inflammatory bowel disorders. Cyanosis, as such, in this case, it's not important. Uh, then you look for any dysmorphic facial features to rule out any syndromes. Eyes looks normal. So here also you should look for the signs of dehydration. Eyes looks normal. Tongue looks moist. Oral cavity looks normal. Head, trunk, extremities looks normal. Uh, and main thing is, if there are any features of nutritional deficiency, you should point out in the head to toe examination, like bite out spot, dermatitis, acrodermatitis, alopecia, pallor. If anything is there, you should uh, mention it in the head to toe examination. Plus, signs of dehydration, whatever it is present, you should point out. Oral cavity, its main, uh, you should look for oral thrush also that points towards immunodeficiency. Systemic examination, abdomen, so inspection, no abdominal distension, all quadrants moves equally with respiration, umbilicus looks normal, no scars or sinuses, hernial orifices looks free, external genitalia appears normal. So palpation, soft, uh, per abdomen it is soft, skin turgor is normal, uh, no tenderness, no organomegaly, percussion is normal, auscultation, normal bowel sounds are heard. Other system examination, it's usually normal in a diarrhea case. Uh, if at all the child is having severe dehydration, then in your central nervous system examination, the child is going to be drowsy or lethargy. And in a car, uh, respiratory system examination, it is going to be fast breathing uh, if the child is having acidotic breathing. In CVS, child can have uh, tachycardia because of severe dehydration. So this is other system examination. This is uh, in diarrhea case, only this much findings can come in the other systems. So summarizing the whole case, Four-year-old male child presents with presenting with loose tools and vomiting, which was acute and onset with poor hygienic practices, who on examination have no signs of dehydration. I would like to give my probable diagnosis as acute watery diarrhea with no dehydration and grade one protein energy malnutrition according to IAP classification of malnutrition. So whatever classification you are using, you have to mention what grade of malnutrition the child falls under. So the next thing they may ask you is, how will you manage this child? So whatever, if you are presenting as acute watery diarrhea with some dehydration, they will ask you, how will you manage this child? So you have to say, as a child is having no dehydration, I will follow the plan A. So plan A, you should treat the child at home. ORS should be given. WHO, low osmolar ORS should be given to prevent dehydration. So how, how much amount will you give? So it is basically, you prevent the dehydration. So 10 ml per kg per loose tool. So 100 to 200 ml after each episode of loose tool, the child should be given ORS. And also home available fluids can be given. Salted drinks like salted rice water, salted but, uh, yogurt or buttermilk, 
vegetable chicken soup tender coconut water dal water plain water can be given to the child then zinc should be given and most important thing is in plan a you should educate the mother regarding the warning signs or danger signs before sending the home before sending her home this is very important so what are the danger signs that you should know so if there is high purge rate if the uh, stool volume is too high and the, the increase in frequency of stool and also if the child is having a persistent vomiting a repeated vomiting child is refusing to feed if there is blood in stools if child is lethargic then the mother you should ask the mother to bring the child to immediately to hospital so this is plan a plan a is basically zinc ors home based fluids and danger signs should be explained so next question may be how will you investigate this child usually in a diarrhea case investigations are not needed so you, you will say investigations are not needed in this child but rarely it may be needed sometimes so these are the investigations that may be rarely needed in a case of acute diarrhea so stool microscopy only if you are suspecting cholera or giardiasis giardiasis if the child is having chronic diarrhea or persistent diarrhea usually they will have uh, loose stools more than 14 days then stool microscopy may be needed to diagnose these things stool culture uh, routinely we don't do stool culture if the dysentery is not responding to our initial empirical antibiotics then you do the stool culture in that shigella dysentery and if the child is having severe dehydration with some complications like altered sensorium labored breathing paralytic ileus oliguria seizures pallor then you do these investigations like complete blood count serum electrolytes renal function test and arterial blood gas analysis or blood gas estimation so as such routinely we don't do investigation at diarrhea case these are the investigations which are rarely needed in certain scenarios so they they may ask how will you define diarrhea diarrhea is defined as change in consistency and frequency of stools that occur more than 3 times a day this is the definition given in op guide so better you should know this how will you classify diarrhea so based on the duration we classify as acute and persistent if it is less than 14 days you call it as acute if it is more than 14 days you call it as persistent diarrhea so what are the causes you can remember calci virus adenovirus astro virus corona virus cytomegalovirus parasitic giardia lamblia cryptospor Rhodium, entamoeba, cyclospora, and exospora. So these are the uh, causes of diarrhea. Next, they may ask you about the ORS. Whenever they are giving a diarrhea case, definitely they will ask you about the uh, composition of ORS. So when they ask you about the ingredients of ORS, say it as sodium chloride, potassium chloride, glucose, and you have to say the grams per liter. Sodium chloride two point six, potassium chloride one point five, glucose anhydrous that is thirteen point five, trisodium citrate is two point eight. when they ask you about the concentration of the ingredients or the composition then you say it as sodium 75 millimoles per liter uh, uh, please note the unit it is 75 millimoles per liter glucose is 75 chloride is 65 potassium is 20 citrate is 10 so this is the ors which we are using to treat diarrhea low osmolarity ors osmolarity is 245 millimoles per liter so the next time i ask you suppose if the ors is not available how will you prepare ors in home how will you prepare the sugar salt solution in home it is 4 g salt 40 g sugar and to be mixed in 1 liter of water so 4 g salt means half small spoon of salt 40 g sugar means six level small spoons to be mixed in 1 liter of water so what is the use of zinc in diarrhea this is a most frequently asked question so zinc it helps in decreasing the severity and duration of the diarrhea and also the risk of persistent diarrhea so what is the dose of zinc less than 6 months 10 mg more than 6 months 20 mg zinc is not based on the weight it is based on the age so if it child is less than 6 months it is 10 mg more than 6 months it is 20 mg and duration is 14 days so next they may ask you how will you assess the dehydration in patients with diarrhea these are all tabular columns are given in your book so no dehydration some dehydration and severe dehydration so you should know plan a plan b plan c so these are the most important thing you should look the general condition of the child how is the eyes tears how is the tongue and if you offer water how the child drinks the child drinks normally it is no dehydration if child drinks eagerly then it is some dehydration the child drinks poorly then it is severe dehydration this is the signs you look at if two or more signs are there and you uh, diagnose you uh, st stamp them as some dehydration and severe dehydration 
So when you feel for the skin pinch, if it goes back slowly, then it is uh, no dehydration. Go uh, goes back quickly, it is no dehydration. Goes back slowly, it is some dehydration. If it goes back very slowly, it is severe dehydration. So next thing is, they may ask you, what? How will you uh, treat the child in Plan B? Some dehydration. So you should know it is three compartment. One is normal daily fluid requirement. One is rehydration therapy. The other one is maintenance fluid therapy. So normal fluid requirement, holiday cigar formula. You should remember this. Up to 10 kg, it is 100 ml per kg. 10 to 20 kg, it is 50 ml per kg. More than 20 kg, it is 20 ml per kg. Next thing is you have to replace whatever the child has lost. So that is called deficit replacement to correct the existing deficit. In some dehydration, you always give ORS to the child. It is not intravenous fluid. So 75 ml per kg of ORS to be given over four, four hours. The child is unable to take orally, the nasogastric tube can be used. Maintenance fluid therapy is, this starts after correcting the replay, uh, deficit. After correcting the deficit, then you start giving the maintenance fluid therapy. That is to replace the ongoing losses and to prevent recurrence of dehydration. This phase should begin when the signs of dehydration disappears, usually within four hours. So uh, once a child passes uh, loose stools, you replace it with the ORS, 10 ml per kg per stool. So these three compartments you should remember. Severe dehydration, plan C, it is intravenous fluid. Choice of fluid, they may ask you. Ringer lactate with 5% dextrose is ideal fluid, but plain uh, ringer lactate or normal saline can be used. So this is given an OP guy. So less than 12 months, more than 12 months. So totally it is 100 ml per kg. You split it as 30 ml per kg and 70 ml per kg. So this 30 ml per kg, if it, the child is less than uh, 12 months, you give it in one hour. The child is more than 12 months, you give it in 30 minutes. 70 ml per kg, if the child is less than 12 months, you give it in five hours. If the child is more than 12 months, you give it in two and a half hours. So this is how you remember it. So what are the complications of diarrhea? So the most important consequence of diarrhea is malnutrition and dehydration. So because of dehydration, we have n number of complications. So dehydration can cause electrolyte imbalance like hyponatremia, hypernatremia, hypokalemia. Uh, hyponatremia can cause convulsions. Hypoglycemia can also cause convulsions. And hypokalemia can cause paralytic ileus. Metabolic acidosis can happen. And if the dehydration is too severe, if the hemoconcentration is more, then child may have thromboembolic manifestations like cerebral venous thrombosis and sagittal sinus thrombosis. So what is the role of antibiotics in diarrhea? Di antibiotics are not recommended for routine treatment of acute diarrhea in children. This you should remember. Then I ask you when antibiotics are indicated. So only we are going to give antibiotic in a bacillary dysentery, cholera, giardiasis, amoebiasis, and diarrhea associated with other systemic infections, severe acute malnutrition, very young infant, less than three months with sepsis. So these are the indications for antibiotics and diarrhea. This you should remember. Routinely, we don't give antibiotics. So then finally, they will ask you, how will you prevent diarrhea? So main thing is proper nutrition has to be given to prevent malnutrition. Malnutrition itself is a risk factor for diarrhea. Then main thing is hygienic practices, adequate sanitation, hand washing, uh, using latrin facility for defecation and boiling water before drinking, uh, disposing garbages in a safe place. So all these are hygienic measures you should uh, advise them and vaccination. They may ask you about the rotavirus vaccination. So these are the things they may ask you in preventing measures. And uh, last important slide is IMNCA. Finally, they will ask you about the IMNCA. So they, we have two classifications for diarrhea. One is uh, based on the age, two months to five years and up to two months. So two months up to five years. First thing is you classify based on the duration. Uh, whether it is uh, persistent diarrhea or acute diarrhea. And if the child is having blood in stools, you, uh, you name it as dysentery. So dysentery, you have to start antibiotic. So give cefixim, oral cefixim. If the child is not sick, you give us oral cefixim. If the child is sick, then you are going to give parenteral antibiotic like ceftriaxone. And uh, zinc is also needed in dysentery. And you have to follow up. If there is a dehydration, you have to correct it. The list of all things are same what we have uh, said already. No dehydration, some dehydration, severe dehydration. So in IMNSA, main thing is we have color coding, green, yellow, and pink. Pink is you uh, immediate measures have to be taken. That is what the pink refers. Some uh, yellow means you can start the treatment. And green means you can send the child back home. 
So no dehydration, you can give fluid, zinc, and you can advise the mother regarding the danger signs and you have to follow, you have to treat the child in home. So yellow means if the child is having some dehydration, you start giving fluids. Suppose if the child is having some other severe classification, like for bacterial, serious bacterial infection, some other uh, severe pneumonia, then it's better refer, to, uh, refer the child urgently to hospital. But on the way, I have to give ORS. And severe dehydration, you, if the child is having no other severe classification, you give fluid for severe dehydration according to plan C. But at the same time, the child is having one more severe classification, you urgent refer uh, you refer the child urgently to a hospital, nearby hospital. But if the child is uh, two years or older and there is cholera in your area, give doxycycline for cholera. That is, the child is having rice watery stools, then better you have to start doxycycline. And if there is an epidemic of cholera, in the same locality, then you have to start. So age up to two months, uh, less than two months, young infant, uh, the risk of sepsis possible bacterial infection is more. So if the child is having no dehydration, so same thing like I said previously, you have to follow up in uh, home, uh, give fluids to treat diarrhea and uh, some dehydration. If the child has another severe classification or if the child is low birth weight, then you have to give the first dose of antibiotic, intramuscular ampicillin or oral amoxicillin and then you have to refer. If the child does not have any other complications or any other severe classification, then you can give fluid for some dehydration and you can advise some other to return. If that child is having severe dehydration, then you have to refer the child urgently to another hospital. Uh, if the child is having not having any other uh, this thing, main difference in age up to two months is you have to start the antibiotic. That is what you have to notice. In some dehydration also, you are giving first dose of uh, ampicillin. In severe dehydration also, ampicillin is given. So this is what you should notice the difference in the age less than two months and two to five years. So that's all in the IMNCA. At least you should know how they classify the diarrhea according to IMNCA. So thank you. If you have any doubts, you can ask me.